Suha says, what are the Islamic benefits of cupping? And what are the days when it is recommended and prohibited to do cupping? Cupping is part of the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. He recommended it and he told us in an authentic hadith that if cure was in anything, it is in one of three, either a taste of honey or a slash of a cupper, person who's doing the cupping, or by cuterization. What is cupping? Cupping is extracting blood from the body, from certain areas, generally speaking, at the back of the head and neck. These are the areas most likely that cuppers use to suck the blood out. Before, in the beginning, they used to use a razor, cut uh, slashes, and place a mug or a special device, and then suck the blood out. The nature of the blood is different than the normal blood you get from a wound or from an artery. And this blood is usually dark, very, very thick, and people are relieved afterwards. It is beneficial for those who have migraines, high blood, uh, blood uh, uh, pressure, it's good for the eyesight, so many benefits of it, not only in Islam, even in nations before Islam, it was known. And the Prophet himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, performed cupping. He asked someone to perform cupping to him and gave him one full dinar, which is a lot of money. Now, cupping is part of the sunnah, especially for healing and curing. But is it permissible to do all the times or there are certain times, it's an issue of dispute among scholars. And Imam Malik, Imam uh, Yahya ibn Ma'in, and, and great Imams of Hadith, they say that all the Hadiths regarding the timings of cupping and naming of the dates are not authentic. And the vast majority of scholars say that according to medical reports, cupping on the 17th, 19th, or the 21st of the lunar month is more beneficial than any other days of the month. And Ibn al-Qayyim spoke about the benefits of it after having the full moon, etc. These are things that medical doctors support. And there are hadiths, though weak, yet the Salaf used to implement them. Now, Imam Malik says nothing is authentic in regards to the dates to make or not to make cupping. And he says, there isn't any day that I have not made cupping in. So Imam Malik says, it's all open. Imam Ahmed, as we know from his school of thought, that whenever there isn't any sound hadith backing it up, he would take weak hadith and implement it rather than implementing self-reasoning, like the school of Abu Hanifa, for example. He would say that, no, weak hadith is better for me than the sayings of Ibrahim and Nakhi or Sufyan al thawri or uh, uh, Tom Dick or Harry. And he used to dislike cupping on Saturdays and Wednesdays. But again, it is not authentic, though Imam Tirmidhi authenticated some of it, Sheikh Al-Albani authenticated some of it, but the general trend among the predecessors of scholars, of Imams of Hadith, that all of this is not authentic and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. So it is best to limit 
your cupping to th uh, 17th, 19th, and 21st. And if you can av avoid Saturdays and Wednesdays, that would be great. If not, there's no problem. Having said this, this is related to cupping, which is a form of ibadah. There's no medical reason for that. If you have a medical reason for cupping, there is no problem at all among scholars to do it any time of the day or any time of the night, any day of the week, any day of the month. There's no problem in that, none whatsoever.